Hey, shalom, brothers and sisters. Today I want to talk about uh, the golden calf. The golden calf uh, that Israel worshipped, you know, foolish mistake. Um, the, uh, the golden calf, of course, the apis bull came out of Egypt with uh, Israel. And uh, they never really learned their lesson with this thing. I don't know, but um, I'm going to read some scriptures to you about it. Uh, I'm going to go to Exodus uh, chapter 32. Please follow me if you have a Bible. If not, you know, check up on these verses later and and, re and read and study, st study this scripture because it's idolatry is what this is. And idolatry is still going on today in many churches, many, many churches, and they don't even know it, just like the Israelites didn't know that this was idolatry. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'll just start with uh, the first verse of 32. And when the prophet saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mountain, or the, wait, and when the people saw that Moses delayed and come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make, make us mighty ones, or make us gods, which shall go, shall go before us, for as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wrought, wrought not that what is become of him. We don't know what we don't know what happened to him because he's gone so long. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in thine ears of your wives and your sons and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people broke broke the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Mo, uh, Aaron. And he received them in their hand and and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy mighty ones, O Israel, which brought uh, thee up out of the land of Egypt. So they're uh, right now they're turning their backs on Yahweh. They're disrespecting them. And uh, it's not going to go very well with them. They should have learned their lesson. You know, all the miracles they've seen, like the Red Sea, the plagues, and everything else. But... For some reason, they seemed like they was forgetful or something. Uh, and when when, Mo, when Aaron saw it, he built the altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is the feast to Yahweh. And they rose up early in the, the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And Yahweh said unto Moses, they were, they were on the mountain right now, this, Go, get thee down, for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made unto them a molten calf, and have worshipped it, and have sacrificed thereunto, and said, These be the mighty ones, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And Yahweh said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. So they are, they're, they're stiff-necked people is what they are. Now, therefore, let me alone that my wrath shall wax hot against them, and that I might consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. Yahweh started getting fired up, you could say. He's getting mad. He's going to destroy all those people except Moses, and he's going to, he's going to like uh, repopulate the earth or create, his, create the holy seed through Moses' seed. You know, just like... You know, Noah and his kids, you know, how he destroyed the earth. He was, uh, Yahweh was really upset and he was getting ready to destroy the, the tribes at this point. And Moses besought Yahweh, his Elohim, and said, Yahweh, why doth thou like, wax hot against the people which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with great mi mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, for mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against the people. Please remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, of whom thou swearest by thy own self and saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto the seed, and they shall inherit forever. 
So he's uh, Moses is pleading this case. He's he's, he's like a mediator. He's in between Yahweh. He's trying to calm Yahweh down and please don't do this. You know, don't take him out of the land of Egypt just to kill him because, you know, is that what you know? Egypt's and other people be thinking that's what he planned all along. So he's pleading their case. You know, he's like, have mercy on them. They don't know any better. And Yahweh repented of his evil, which he thought to do unto the people. And Moses turned and went down from the mountain, and the two tablets of the testimony, the Ten Commandments, were in his hand. The tables were written on both their sides, front and back, and on one side and the other side were they written. And the and the tables and the tables were the work of Elohim, and the writing was the writing of Elohim graven onto the tablets. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people, as they uh, shouted, he said unto Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, It's not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear. And it came to pass, as soon as he came near unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses was it was, well, he was angry too. He became angry just like Yahweh was moments before. And he cast down the tables out of his hands and broke them beneath the mountain. Mount, the mountain. He, he threw them down. He was so mad and disgusted what he saw. And he took the calf which, he, which they had made and burned it in the fire and ground it to powder and, and strawed it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink of it. And Moses said unto Aaron, what did this people do? What do these people unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my sovereign wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. And you know that's that's pretty obvious through their history too, the Israelites' history, where they said unto me, Make us mighty ones which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man has brought us up out of the land of Egypt were wrought not what has become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let him break it off. So they gave it to me, and I cast it into fire, and there came out this calf. And when Moses saw that, the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. So there's partying naked. That's what he's doing. He's getting really getting down, partying. They're all naked, dancing, doing whatever. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on Yahweh's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim of Israel, Put every man to his sword, put every man his sword, by his side, and go in and out from the gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell on the fell of the people that day about three thousand men. So the Levites say uh, restored order, I guess, with the sword. So Moses had said, "Consecrate yourselves today." For Yahweh, even every man's upon his son and upon his brother, and he that bestow upon the upon you a blessing this day. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, You have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up unto Yahweh peradventure, and I will make an atonement for your sin. And Moses returned unto Yahweh and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them mighty ones of gold. You know, God's. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, if not blot me, I pray thee out of thy book, which thou hast written. That's a book of life. And, and Yahweh said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Therefore, now go lead the people unto the place which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, mine angel shall go forth before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And Yahweh plagued the people because they made the calf which Aaron made. So they didn't, you know, he might, they might have been forgiven in a way, but in a way, but 
You know, they didn't go without punishment. They got got a added got a plague on them. So that was uh, the calf that they the calf worship religion. They they came out of Egypt. They brought it out because that's what they knew back then, and they thought they weren't doing any wrong in doing that, but they did. And they got a powerful message, a warning about it, and uh, that was the last of the golden calf because Israel, of course. Started doing that again when uh, the United Kingdom broke up and the you know the northern and the southern uh, kingdoms. Jeroboam he became the king of the northern Israelites, the ten tribes, and he reintroduced the calf worship from Egypt. And it's kind of ironic that Israel, when they came out of Egypt, they brought that out with them. They brought that religion with them, but Jeroboam. He was uh he was uh serving under Solomon and he he uh angered Solomon and Solomon wanted to kill him. So he ran to Egypt and down in Egypt he must have uh learned the the Apis bull golden calf worship down there again and when he came back up became king, he reintroduced it to the children of Israel. He didn't want them to go to Jerusalem you know, to to the temple and do the, the religion because he was afraid that after a while people would start wanting to reunite with Judah again and then they would uh, take him and they would execute him and Rehoboam would be the king once more of the United Kingdom. That's what he's afraid of. And uh, I think it's First Kings, First Kings, uh, chapter 12, 25. I'm going to read 25 to uh, 33 about his idolatry. Then Jeroboam built built Shechem, uh, Shechem unto Mount Ephraim and dwelt thereon and went out from hence to built Peniel. And Jeroboam said unto the heart, Now shall the kingdom of now the Shin kingdom return to the house of David, if this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of Yahweh at Jerusalem. Then shall the heart of the people turn again unto their sovereign, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two casts of gold. Here we go, the casts of gold again. And said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy mighty ones, O Israel, that brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So here we got that reference again, like they did you know, on uh, you know Mount Sinai, there. You know, here's your gods again. This is this is, you know, verbatim. He's 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 saying the words that that you know uh, Aaron said right there at the altar. You know, the golden calf. Uh, and he's and he set one uh, he set one in Bethel, and the other he put in Dan, that towns. And this thing became a sin for the people went to worship before the one even unto Dan. And he made a, a house of high places and made priests of the lowest of people, which were not the sons of Levi. He was from the other tribes, and Levi is the priestly tribe. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month of the fifteenth day of the month, like this, unto the feast that is in Judah. And he offered upon the altar, so did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves, that he made, he had made, and he replaced in Bethel the priest of the highest places which he had made. So he offered upon the altar which was that he made in Bethel the fifteenth day of the eighth month, even in the month which he had devised of his own heart, and ordained a feast unto the children of Israel, and he offered upon the altar and burnt incense. So he's making a counterfeit religion. He's not it's not the true religion of Yahweh. It's a counterfeit religion. He's changing things around, and he kicked Yahweh out of their presence, which was totally wrong. And throughout the history, as you go down with the kings and kings, they just get more evil, more polluted, and they introduce even more mighty ones or gods, you know, unto the the flock, you know, the children. Of and Judah, Judah wasn't it wasn't immune to it. Judah Judah followed suit, you know. But they, you know, and he had a couple times, you know, when a couple good kings would come, you know, every once in a while. And then Judah, the kings of Judah, a couple kings came, tried to restore the true faith, you know. 
short lived, but you know, it's ad admirable that they did that. And, uh, anyways, uh, you know, I just wanted to talk about the golden calf, you know, came out of Egypt, Avis bull, bull worship, Hathor, the goddess Hathor. You can look that up, do research on that, but please, you know, study this up, you know, look it up. And, um, I thank you again for tuning in and until we meet again and please like my videos, uh, subscribe and hit the notification bells, you know, comment below. I like, I, I like to hear from you. And, um, with that said, share the videos with anybody and everybody you can pass the good news along. And with that said and done, thank you. Shalom and peace out.